artists, collectors, and people who just like to watch art. I wanted to come in. My name is Esther Jones, and we are going to do a painting this week of a Paris scene. Um, my daughter is a flight attendant, and she goes um, across the world sometimes, and she was able to go to Paris, and she caught this uh, photograph for me now she's a great photographer as well but I'm going to go ahead and try to turn this into a decent painting and I hope you enjoy watching and um, uh, following along with me uh, this will just be part one uh, I'm gonna show you each day a little bit more of what I'm painting so um, hang in there and be sure to come back for part two. If you want to be sure to catch that, you can just check that uh, subscribe button and hit the little bell so that you will know whenever I put up a new video. All right, so the very first thing that I wanted to show you is how I set up my board to put my UART 400. Actually, this is for UART 600. I received a prize that was UART 600. I usually work on UART 400, but you can see how the tape is in the four corners and in the middle. And I may use that board two or three times. Once I get through the painting, I'll take it off. So also then, um, I realized I had it in uh, landscape mode and I needed to put it in portrait in order to do this painting of this Paris street scene. So um, here is the street scene. I uh, hope you can get a kind of a good look at that. And I have sped up this part quite a bit. It took me about 20 or 25 minutes to get the drawing on this. Normally I will draw, uh, I will do a sketch in my sketchbook um, may even do some kind of a no tan um, or double check my values. Um, today, I'm choosing to take the risk to not do that. Uh, in my mind, I am dividing that paper um, into thirds both ways. Um, I did not make those crop marks on there. Um, sometimes I do, but today I did not. Um, I am using both the crop marks and the corners and referring to my reference photo often. Um, and you'll see, I'm going to uh, make a lot of mistakes. You're going to see a lot of erasing. You're going to see a lot of, oops, that wasn't right. You're going to see a lot of uh, correcting, and that's fine. It's mo very important, especially with a building scene, to really get the drawing very close. Uh, I'm not uh, wanting to make this into a super accurate, realistic um, painting. So I'm okay with a little fudging. Um, I'm not looking for realism here, so. Uh, and what you're seeing me do right here is I am double checking the proportions of the painting to see if um, the size of my paper is going to be pretty close to um, the proportions of the original photo. It's not, so I'm making adjustments here. And that's okay. Again, I'm hoping this will be kind of a loose rendition of it to get the feeling. And I'm not too worried. Um, I do want you to have the feeling of buildings. I want to get um, perspective. But I don't care if it's exactly perfect. So uh, this archway, archways always give me trouble. Um, you really have to look carefully at them. Chances are, if you're not looking at them straight on, uh, they're going to be skewed a little bit in your vision. And if you look really carefully, you'll be able to tell one side will be steeper, uh, more steep, more sharp of a curve. 
and one side will be extended out a little bit. And if you don't get that right, your perspective will um, not work. Notice that because of the way the photo's taken, I am having to uh, do some interesting things with the straight lines. Notice that the bottom left edge of that arch um, has to spread out because it's coming toward you. It's closer to the viewer um, and so it looks really spread out there. I, I, I do adjust as time goes on. I'm still adjusting as we go. That line isn't going to work. Eventually I'm going to have to straighten it out and uh, still working on that arch. There's a uh, uh, two levels of it so I need to make sure that gets right. Notice the perspective. I'm very I'm checking very carefully that window next to the on the left of the arch. There's a window and um, notice that the lines have to be angled at a certain way to make that um, perspective work and um, you can't just say oh well that's a window so the lines are straight you have to really look at them and decide that I'm still still fighting with that arch there's an inner arch the edge of the arch and then there's um, a lining around the arch so there's three arches there and they all have to be uh, done well all right, moving on uh, to the canopy edge. There's a restaurant here, and it's all lit. There are people. Um, it's obviously um, early evening. The light is still in the sky, but it's early evening in between these buildings. It's quite dark, so the lights are all on. It's quite golden underneath that arch and that golden light is reflecting up onto the building that is my main star that's the main thing that i'm after in this painting i love the colors there there are mixes of violet reds uh, violet blues oranges and pinks and they're just gorgeous so i'm going to be um adding that in this building is really interesting as well. It's got lots of um, extra architectural features that are um, quite interesting. I don't want them to take away from the uh, main point, which is that golden light around the restaurant there. But on the other hand, I also want you to know that this is a building in Paris. If you've ever been there, I want you to go, oh, I think I know that scene. Oh, it turns out that that building um, to the right is actually um, has uh, levels on the um, top that... Um, go back so I'm I'm correcting that and also trying to get the perspective correct those lines are going to start to come through come closer to one another as they go back behind the other building now I don't want to forget that this goes back behind the other building I don't want to draw it but I want to remember that those lines extend to the end of the building there's a little tree hanging out over the top of that so I'm not too worried about how the top corner of the building goes. All right, then just adding some more details. Not sure that these details I'm adding in right now are going to continue. I'm starting to add people in. People is something that, uh, adding people in is something that I've just begun recently because I, um, really feel nervous about doing people but in this case uh, i'm feeling i'm feeling brave because the um effect i'm wanting is pretty abstract 
and the people are uh, for the most part either in the dark or they're far enough away that I can make just a suggestion of the person there and uh, you'll th you'll know it's a person, but you won't be worried about whether their eyes are the same size and that sort of stuff. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to giving this a try and putting some of these abstract sort of carroty people in there. All right, it's my pencil. <laughs> my uh, pastel pencil has gotten dull, and so I'm stepping over to sharpen. It won't take but just a second, and then I'll finish this drawing, and we'll get to some painting. Okay, it's all done. There's not much more to add. Um, I, I still don't <laughs> like the arch. I'm still fighting with that arch. Uh, I probably will fight with it until the end of the painting. Uh, that's typical for me. But I've got to get that looking um, correct so that it um, enhances the feeling of that building. That building is kind of looming up over you. It's super tall um, and very massive. And I want to make sure that you get that perspective. And that arch is a big part of that. There's my thumbs up saying, hey, I think I've got it it's close enough now. So some more. Uh, still not super happy with that line. I'll probably have to adjust that later as well. And uh, let's see, what else? Okay, I'm checking my reference photo again. I wonder what I'm after. I can't remember. Ah, the these little curves. There's a line going across there. These little curves, um, they're little uh, crenellations and um, posts. I don't know. I don't know the right word. Maybe I should uh, study some architecture. Um, but they're, uh, they're so much a part of... of catching the light that I want to make sure that I have them in there well you see I had drawn that line before and it was way too high up so uh, I'm I'm just putting those back in I'm double checking about the ones up top again I'm going to make sure that those uh, lines are um, angled just so, so that they give you the idea that it's going off into the distance. All right, picking my palette, and I'm going to begin with the darker colors. You're going to see me. I want to get the values right. If I get the values right, everything else will be much easier. And so um, I'm going to pick my darker colors first. Then I'll pick some of the lighter colors. I will add to this palette as we go. But I'm going to start out with uh, some of these so that we can make sure that um, we have a, a harmonious palette. I'm going to look at it. I like those colors. I think they go with the ones in the photo. So here we go. I'm going to begin with the Terry Ludwig eggplant. This is a very dark scene down at the bottom. I will add the lighter parts in later. Remember with pastels, you will uh, paint dark to light. Uh, it's quite okay to do that. And I am looking very carefully at my reference photo for where everything is dark. Remember that what I'm after is the light, the golden light from that cafe that is um, catching on the building. So we're going to, um, I'm making sure that I leave uh, the parts that will be highlighted Nice. And don't worry about my drawing. I can still see it under there, and I will restore it 
Now I'm just adding some more richness to those darks. So yes, I did a lot of work on that drawing and I will keep it. It will um, be still, I'll still be able to see it and I will restore it before I do anything else. I'm putting in some of my people. They are quite dark. They are blocking the light. They are backlit. So I'm putting in these little people and I'll add uh, features. I'll add some light to them so that later it'll make better sense. All right. And again, just there's a that's still dark. It's not as dark. So notice that I picked up a slightly lighter tint and then up at the top, it's not it's not as dark at all. So taking a lighter color there. Um, want to make sure that I'm keeping that uh, um, part of the architecture that's going to be lit uh, in orange. It's got a, a deep red violet undertone and then orange on top. So I'm, I'm considering that as I go. But it is still dark. Everything um around that cafe uh is very light but it's uh reflecting up onto the darker buildings so i'm going to really work hard to get that feeling that's the goal checking my reference photo i realized that there are some turquoise lights in that building across the street and that they really add to the atmosphere so i'm going to make sure that i have that color in there where I can um, use it later on and make sure that everything feels right. So I used a warmer sort of a green, but I'll mute that down quite a bit because it's got to go backwards. Uh, notice that the blues that I'm using on the building are very muted. They're grayed down. We Artists will use uh, that term that they're grayed down. So I don't want pure blues here. I want them grayed down. This is evening, and um, so all the tones are muted. All right, I hope you enjoyed this first part. Goodbye.